outdoor settings. That's the latest guidance from the CDC. Frank Collin joins us now with a look, though, at corporate America's response. Hi, Frank. Hey, good morning to you, Joe. You know, it's been more than a year since the CDC first recommended that we all wear a cloth face covering to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Now, this new guidance comes as just about 59% of all American adults have had at least one shot, and we are inching closer to that 70, 80% level where we all hopefully get herd immunity. But there's also an ongoing debate nationally about the need for face covering mandates. About half the country has one, half the states don't. Many businesses have those mandates as well, but even in states and stores where the mandates are in place, we have continued to see opposition and confrontations like these over wearing a mask. The CDC's new guidance could put a lot of pressure on essential businesses and their workers. The union for about 1.3 million grocery and retail workers saying in part about this new guidance, essential workers are still forced to play mask police for shoppers who are unvaccinated and refuse to follow local COVID safety measures. Are they now supposed to become the vaccination police? But of course, some businesses are going to welcome this change. Disney CEO had this to say about the impact on the company's theme park business. I think it speaks to the uh, ability for our guests now to come in, uh, you know, more significant ways to our parks. And right now, as we speak, we're already increasing the capacities to our parks, given the guidance that we've gotten. And we're here at a grocery, uh, grocery chain right now. This chain will keep their mask mandate in place. Walmart and Target reportedly will as well. CVS tells us they're still evaluating. Important to remember, the CDC's guidance remains the same when it comes to airports, airplanes, public transit, and also healthcare settings. Back over to you. Thank you very much. Joining us right now to talk more about it is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. Of course, he's the former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor who also serves on the boards of both Pfizer and Illumina. And Dr. Gottlieb, okay, help us figure this out this morning. CDC guidance is pretty clear. What's less clear is how businesses in particular are going to respond to this. Um, what do you think happens next? Well, look, first of all, I think uh, CDC had to take this step, whether they took it now or they took it a week from now. I think you're seeing the situation improve around the country. Many parts of the country have fewer than five cases per 100,000 people per day or about there. Um, about half the states have less than 10 cases per 100,000 people per day, which really were the thresholds that we defined as when we would start relaxing these public health measures. There are states that are approaching 70 percent of their population vaccinated. So these are the thresholds where we said we would relax these provisions. And many states, in fact, have relax these provisions. So I think CDC is conforming to what's going on in the states and what people aspire to do. Um, states now need to interpret the guidance from CDC. They're going to implement new measures. And then businesses need to interpret their state regulations, their state mandates. I suspect a lot of businesses, a lot of retail locations will probably keep their employees in masks for a period of time longer. I suspect some stores, some um, locations may continue to require masks to enter. But I think we're really at the period right now where over the next two weeks, these are going to be quickly washed away. I think all these ordinances will be quickly um, relaxed across the country. And as we get into June, masks will no longer be required and prevalence levels will be very low and the risk to the average individual will be low as well. Final point, there's sort of collective hand-wringing right now on Twitter among the public health crowd that a lot of people who are unvaccinated are going to say that they're vaccinated and go without masks in retail locations and other sites. There are people who are going to do that. I think people who are, are going to do that would have done it anyway. I think quite the opposite. This is going to provide a pretty strong incentive for a lot of people who might have been on the fence about getting vaccinated to go out and get vaccinated right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bump up in a number of people going out to get vaccinated because now being vaccinated provides more value. You can go around without a mask in an honest fashion. Let's talk a little bit about another headline that we were discussing earlier in the show, and that's the Yankees, who now have eight cases of COVID among players who were supposedly vaccinated. Um, the breakthrough cases is something that I think people will probably pay attention to. What does that mean? Are the vaccines less effective than we thought? Um, is there a new strain that's running around that gets through? What happens when, when these people are infected? I think seven of the eight are um, asymptomatic infections. Will they spread it potentially to others? I think that's a question that people who are vaccinating are starting to wonder, especially if you have small kids who have not been vaccinated or if you're around somebody who's at heightened risk and who, who, who maybe you want to be careful about them, even if you feel like you're safe and you're not going to wind up in the hospital. 
Right. These are all important questions, and they're all good questions. We don't have answers to them right now. We have real-world evidence with the mRNA vaccines uh, produced by Moderna and Pfizer, the company I'm on the board of, that show that they're very effective at reducing asymptomatic infection in a general population. We have real-world evidence out of Israel. And we also have evidence out of the U.S., a study that looked at about 4,000 healthcare workers and showed a significant reduction in the risk of any infection, including asymptomatic infection. We don't have evidence like that around the J&J &J vaccine, not because the J&J &J vaccine doesn't necessarily uh, reduce asymptomatic infection, but it hasn't been studied in that way yet because not as many people have been vaccinated with it. So we don't know whether or not it reduces asymptomatic infection to the same magnitude. I think the really key finding here is that these individuals didn't get sick. Um, we know these vaccines are very effective at protecting you from becoming symptomatic, developing serious COVID symptoms, and the vaccine does seem to have been effective in this case. We don't know what these individuals were doing. They might have been in very close contact with each other. We don't know how they were tested. They might have been tested on PCR machines where the cycle threat thresholds were very high, so the machine was picking up very low levels of virus that these individuals were harboring. That might not have made them very um, transmissible, might not have made them very contagious, but was enough to register a positive test. So there's a whole lot we don't know. Public health authorities in New York need to investigate this. They also need to figure out what the strain was that they were infected with and whether or not it was one of the more transmissible strains. So a lot of unanswered questions. I think the bottom line a piece of good news here is that seven of the eight didn't become symptomatic. They were picked up probably because they tested the entire clubhouse. When they identified one symptomatic case, they must have gone through and tested everyone and picked up these seven um, asymptomatic infections. Let me just ask, though, there, there was uh, the CDC said, I think, uh, as of April 15th, there had been something like 5,300 5, breakthrough cases of COVID, people who had been already vaccinated, out of 77 million Americans that, that had been vaccinated. Do you think that this is a case where that, that's a true reflection of the numbers? Or do you think there are a lot more people who can get uh, infected, have an asymptomatic infected, and they're not being tested like the Yankees are? It's probably not the case that there's a whole lot of asymptomatic infection happening um, as a consequence or of people who've been vaccinated. Um, and we certainly know that there's not a lot of asymptomatic infections happening among people who've been vaccinated. And also, we need to remember that even if you've been vaccinated and you develop an asymptomatic infection, there's pretty good evidence now that you're less contagious, you're less likely to transmit the infection. We have studies in humans. We also have studies in non-human primates that are actually quite effective, good models for studying this um, this phenomenon. I think the most objective data that we have around the, the risk that you face after vaccination is the CDC data that you cited looked also at hospitalizations and found about 800 hospitalizations among around 90 million people who had been vaccinated. And of those 800 hospitalizations where people were symptomatic, they were, so they were, uh, they were infected, so they were hospitalized and they had they were diagnosed with coronavirus right. infection when they were it's hospitalized, got... about a third of them were picked up incidentally. Real quick, and I should say, Bill Maher <laughs> overnight also apparently uh, has an asymptomatic case, and he was vaccinated, so another breakthrough uh, case. My, my question to you is, we were talking about, is this science, meaning that taking off the mask, the CDC's decision based in science, or do you think it's based in behavioral science, which is to say the issue you've talked about, which is trying to provide a better incentive to get closer to herd immunity so that more people take the vaccine and say to themselves, there's incentive to do so, and that wearing a mask was not incentive enough. Look, I think it's some element of both those things. But the bottom line is the vaccines are very protective. They protect you from developing symptomatic disease and severe outcomes of COVID. They prevent uh, infection. They prevent both asymptomatic infection and transmission. We're at a point right now where prevalence is declining. I think the worst you could say about the action that the CDC took is, well, maybe they could have waited another week. But there's a lot of people saying they should have done this a week ago as well. So that's the challenge of governing. You have to make a decision. The CDC had to draw a line in the sand. I think inevitably we were going to re be relaxing these mask guidelines at some point over the month of May, given the fact that prevalence levels are declining. And the, the percent of the population that's still vulnerable to COVID, meaning that they face a significant risk of a bad outcome from COVID, has declined substantially because we vaccinate the most vulnerable Americans. At some point, we're going to have to move past coronavirus and start living normally again. And, you know, we're at that point right now. We're right at the cusp of being able to take masks off and start re-engaging in normal activities. From your lips, Scott, thank you. Have a great weekend, and we will see you Thanks next week. Right now, thank you. Rick Santelli is standing